Hey guys, welcome back. All right, this is part two of the Killer Instinct Arcade Restoration Project. And we're gonna be focused mainly on the control panel. So if you guys remember from the video before this, the control panel was pretty whacked out, right? The top of it, the artwork was actually, it had uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter on it. The acrylic top was pretty beat up. I have no idea the condition of the artwork underneath and those graphics that were sitting on the top of it, I don't know if those are gonna come off easily or not, but we're gonna do that all in this video. And the side panels, they were all chunked out. Now this happens when you're moving these arcades around over the years, they get, they bump into things, the wood chips off. So that just happens, but we need to restore that because we can't put artwork over, you know, messed up wood. So we have to fix that. So in this video, we're gonna focus all on that. It's gonna be a longer form video. So just get some popcorn and enjoy. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so we're gonna get ready to take this control panel off because we're gonna put artwork, new artwork under here. We're gonna put new artwork on the sides, on the front, but there's definitely some touch-up work that needs to get done to this. So we're gonna do some Bondo and stuff like that. Right now on the screen, what you see is actually the Darksoft mod that I was showing you guys for a while. So it's a CPS2 board. And I know you guys can't see this, but this, this basically is a breakout box and it says Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Now, if I scroll up here and go to X-Men versus Street Fighter and hit enter, what it's doing right now is it's actually flashing the board with the ROM files for uh, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and then you'll see that game start playing. I wanted to show that to you guys real quick, so I wanted to enjoy the cabinet while I could, you know, even though it's in rough shape. So you'll see this a load. It usually takes, you know, less than 20 seconds, but the benefit to this is you're actually using real hardware. There's no emulation here, so the game is going to play exactly how you remember it. So we'll give it a couple more seconds. This thing will fire up, but there's, um, I can't remember how many games are on this. I've got, like, maybe the whole CPS2 collection or pretty close to that. And so you'll see this will boot up exactly like a real arcade would because, it, like I said, it's using real arcade hardware. So there it is. You'll see X-Men versus Street Fighter uh, right now, actually. So there you go. So anyway, it's really cool. This is really neat. We will have to do another video on it. I'm kind of like torn because I kind of want to keep it in here and play with it. But oh well, I won't for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut this thing off. I'm going to actually take the control panel and I made these... Well, that's really loud. I made these labels that so I know exactly where all the buttons are so that I can rewire this later, but I made all these buttons for the controls. So I'm gonna flip this up, I'm gonna label it all, and then we're gonna take it out and do our work on it. Okay, so I left the control panel unlatched, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up on the handle here, and you'll see this thing will flip forward. Uh, there's a chain that kind of keeps it from falling out, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna label all of the cabling back here and then that way I can take everything off and basically take the whole entire control panel out. Okay, if you're wondering why I'm going through the process of labeling everything, and if it seems like a pain in the butt, it, it's actually gonna save me a lot of time. Now, you can go uh, and grab the PCB manual for almost, you know, most old PCBs. People have, you know, scanned those manuals. So you can do that and then kind of trace your steps back from the JAMA harness. I just didn't want to do that. It'll make the process a lot easier. So I'll know exactly where everything gets connected after we're done with this. So basically, after I'm done with the labeling and everything, I'm going to remove the buttons and the joysticks and all that. And I'm replacing all of those. So it's not like I have to be ultra careful. And this stuff is pretty old, like I'm guessing. This might have been replaced several times, but you can tell there's a lot of wear and tear on the buttons and joysticks, although they're all still working, which is a testament to, you know, the quality of commercial grade arcade stuff like it will last a long time. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm not going to salvage these. There is a tool, by the way, that you can get buttons out very easily. I couldn't find mine. It's like this little plastic wrench looking tool. I couldn't find it. So I'm having to do everything by hand. But these are so loose because they're being they're rather old. But anyway, so we're going to complete this step and then we can finally um, start to un unbolt the control panel. All right, so we got all the buttons and the joysticks off. And like I said, I think we might be able to salvage, which I'm stoked about. Says this actually looks really nice. We just need to clean it up. But these were just decals or like pieces of paper that someone printed for X-Men versus Street Fighter. So providing I can get these all off, which it looks like I can, if I can get these all off and get it cleaned up, I think we might be okay. Even though I have a new reprint, we might be okay. I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys think? Do you think we should keep this? Definitely when you watch this back and put in the comments below, let me know if you think we should keep this or you think we should, um, you know, try to clean it up and keep it or if we should just put the new artwork on and forget about it. 
Okay, so this process took a really long time. It seemed all simple at first, right? I just removed the stickers and I'm like, oh, this is great, but there was a ton of adhesive and then the parts that were kind of tucked into the buttonholes were super sticky, really hard to get off. And I was thinking, man, I gotta get this off because I'm looking at this control panel artwork going, crap, this looks so good. And I cleaned it up a little bit before I did this. And I just can't see myself removing something that was an original part of the cabinet, even though Game On Graphics provided me a reprint. And by the way, go check out Scott over at Game On Graphics if you need graphics. But man, this part, I had to take a little X-Acto knife. I didn't want to damage the artwork, but I needed to get all the paper off. And I think the end result looks really good. Like guys, seriously, let me know what you think but I can't see myself removing this. It just looks too good. Okay, so we removed all the sticks and buttons and I'm really surprised at how awesome the artwork looked underneath the plexiglass. It needed some cleanup, but we may not have to replace this, which is one less thing that we have to do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove, there's four screws inside to actually be able to lift this out because we do need to do some touch up work on the side. So I'm gonna start to do that really quick. So we're just gonna need to unscrew these four bolts which is one, two, three, and four. And then once we get these up, we should just be able to lift the control panel out and we can bring it outside. Okay, so we undid all four bolts, so we should be able to just lift this up now and we'll bring it outside so we can start the prep work on the sides of the control panel. All right, let's go. We have to actually remove the front control panel, so I'm gonna remove this. There's a couple screws here. So we're gonna remove, there's a screw right here with that has like a little anchor so the control panel um, you know, won't fly off. It's got this little guy right here. So we're gonna, we're gonna get that. I'm gonna put the screw back in there just so we don't lose it. Cause I know me and screws, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'll lose stuff. So I'll put that in there to make sure we don't lose it. And then we're gonna unscrew or unbolt the control panel right here. And again, I, I'm taking little baggies to store all this stuff. Cause I really don't want to lose all of these screws because it's gonna be a pain in the butt when we go to put it back on. All right, so we're almost done with this and I'm gonna put this inside so it's somewhere safe. And then we'll start figuring out what we're gonna do with the sides of this control panel. All right, so this should, should come off. Let's see, I'm not sure how we're gonna get this off. It should just come off, but it, keep in mind it's been on here forever. So it might, oh, there we go. It slid right off. Nice. Okay, so there's the control panel. We're gonna bring that inside, keep it somewhere safe, but you guys can see it looks pretty damn awesome. So I'm not really sure I wanna, you know, ruin that, right? Because it's part of history. All right, let's bring that inside and then we'll get started on this. Okay, so before we can even start prepping the sides, there's actually um, these latches that hold the control panel onto the actual arcade cabinet, but there's bolts that show through here. So I can't start sanding that until we take this off. And then there's the same on the front. There's a bunch of bolts on the front that we've got to come, that, that has to come off. So I'm just popping them out through the front, but those bolts, oh, shoot. These bolts actually go on the front artwork. The front artwork's not terrible, but I just figure if, if I've got that really nice reprint from, from Scott over at Game On, I might as well just put that on there, right? Because it, it would, there's a couple imperfections and I think once I sand that, it'll look really nice. So let's get these two, the bolts for the latches off and then we should be uh, ready to start sanding and getting this all ready. Okay, right here I'm just removing the side bolts for these latches. I have to do it on both sides because I can't sand with these screws in the way, right? I need a flat surface. So I'm gonna get both of these out of there and then at that point, we can start sanding these uh, the side panels down. Okay, we're gonna start by sanding this side panel right here. Now you can see there's a bunch of cracks and stuff like that, that we were gonna have to, you're just gonna have to ignore the dogs. I'm sorry, they just won't stop. Uh, we're gonna have to sort of bondo this to fix this, but we're gonna sand all this. But first of all, get your protective glasses on. Oh yeah. All right, if you know me and power tools, I always make mistakes. So I was using a like an 80 grit sandpaper at first. It took freaking forever. So I switched over to a 40 because we're gonna need a nice, clean, flat, and even surface if we're gonna start the Bondo process. Uh, but of course I didn't use Bondo first, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I finished this side and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing now because I wanna try to fill in these small gaps. There's not many of them, but if I'm gonna make this corner with T-molding, I just want it to be perfect. So I have this stuff that's called uh, Dynatran Glazing Spot Putty. So I was 
uh, tipped off by someone that this is actually a better stuff to use than Bondo on these little kind of little nicks and things like that. So I'm going to try it. I don't know what I'm doing, like I said. So hopefully I can sort of figure this out as I go. Because it's going to be hard because i got to get make this an edge because right now there's like zero edge to this. So I'm trying to see if I can do this without knowing what I'm doing. But I got a good surface here to work with because I sanded it down to basically nothing. So I should be able to sort of build up a corner here and then hopefully uh, sand it down when I'm done. But like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just uh, trying to learn as I go sort of thing. Okay, rather than make you wait, I used Bondo, okay? And my camera died a bunch of times, so I don't have full video of it, but this worked out great, and it was just the right material. Now, you have to be careful when using Bondo because there's a hardening agent. You don't want to put too much of it in because it'll harden super fast but uh, and make it really hard to work with. So it came out really good. The surface is flat. There's a little pro tip that Joe Sabo gave me. So to make a proper corner, I staple gunned a piece of um, cardboard and made a proper angle, and then I filled in the Bondo that way. So you, you'll see, it ended up with a really good corner, and after I was done sanding it, it's, it's perfect and it's ready uh, for artwork to be installed. Okay, so my battery died while I was applying the artwork, but that was probably better that it did because I was cussing up a storm. But anyways, that's how I got it. It looks pretty good. Uh, now we gotta cut the excess off. So I have a couple different ways I do this. I, uh, sometimes I like to lay it flat and cut around. A lot of people don't do that. So I'm gonna try to start it in the corner over here, and get it going, and I should be able to just ride the groove. So usually just you just kind of like apply the sharp edge to the T-mold area, and you usually can get it in one nice cut if you, if you have a steady hand, which I don't. But keep in mind your T-mold, if you make a couple mistakes or a little tiny gap, but not gaps, but little issues here, you can usually fix it when you, um, you know, apply the T-mold. So, all right, that looks pretty good so far. So that top edge, that top, top edge came out pretty good. But keep in mind the T-mold will be over it. So these little, like, that's actually the paint from the top showing through. So no big deal there. All right, after I got the artwork situated on both sides, I decided to do the T-molding. Now, T-molding, if you've never done it before, the corners can be a little bit tricky. So you have to cut like almost these V shapes in there. So you cut this little V shape out so you can make the corner. Now you wanna be careful because those X-Acto knives are so sharp, sharp, you can actually cut the T-mold itself. Once you cut that little V shape out, providing you cut enough of it out, and here I actually didn't cut enough, so I had to go back and cut a little bit more. And then at that point, you can make the corner easily and then you want to like sort of pull it so it's tight. Actually, I had a little bit more I had to take off. So see, I was I was rushing and uh, and it, it and I actually didn't do it right the first time. So I'm cutting a little bit of the excess off. Now I should be able to round this corner no problem and then get the rest of the T-molding in. And then at the end, they do have these cutters, but I didn't have my cutters. I couldn't find them in anywhere either. So I just used a uh, X-Acto knife and cut it really nice. He was giving me a hard time. You're going to want to get like a rubber mallet like this, get it into place, and you're good to go. All right, there it is. That's the new side panel. It looks really good. I'm super stoked. So that side's done. And then we've got our T molding over here and that side's done. So all we need to do really is get, and I, and I kept the front, by the way, I kept the front. I thought the front looked good. I didn't wanna you know, mess with the real artwork. That's the artwork that came with it. Let's keep that original. So really all I have to do now is really put the control panel on top and then you know then we're kind of ready for wiring and buttons and all sorts of stuff so all right we're gonna need to replace these four bolts in the front of the control panel now these hold the hinge that holds the control panel top into place so we need to get those back into place and then we're gonna need to put the control panel back on now the control panel will slide onto these bolts the other end of the hinge will slide onto these bolts and then we'll actually tighten them from the other side now I'm gonna actually take the control panel completely off after so you can see it all completed. And then after that, we'll do some final thoughts. But we're really gonna be on part three, where on part three in the, of the next video, the series, we're gonna do buttons and joysticks and replace a little bit more of the T-molding and do some touch-ups to the front of the cabinet as well as the back access panel of the cabinet.
All right, guys, there you have it. The conclusion of part two of the Killer Instinct restoration project. It was just focused on the control panel. We have so much more work to do. We have to put the sticks. We have to put the buttons. We have to rewire everything. But before we even do that, we got to fix some of the team molding. We got to do some artwork touch-ups. There's a couple more things we have to do, but I will say this. I am learning so much throughout this process. I'm brand new to this. I've never done a real full-size arcade restoration before. So I'm calling up all sorts of friends asking them for tips. I'm calling up Joe Sabo and said, hey bud, how do I do these corners on the on the uh, control panel with Bondo? And he gave me that tip with the cardboard. It totally helped. And by the way, I forgot to mention certain things. Like after I did the sanding, I primed it and then sanded it again with like 240 grit sandpaper, some of it by hand. It was really tough and I had multiple technical issues where during the recording my camera died, had no clue that it did. But I'm also not used to doing long form content like this. It's been a long time since I've done it. But it was really humbling, it was a cool experience, and I have so much more to learn. But the cool thing is, if I can do it, you can do it. Seriously, this stuff is not that hard, it just takes patience, time, and a little bit of knowledge, and calling up some friends, right? And actually, my own arcade group on Facebook, the Home Arcade Modders and whatever the heck it's called, <laughs> Home Arcade Modders and Enthusiasts, I threw a bunch of stuff in there and they helped out a ton. So, just know there's a bunch of resources and people able to help you if you want to, you know, tackle a project like this. And by the way, there's been multiple contributors to the project that I want to thank. I want to thank Joe Sabo, and I also want to thank Scott over at Game On Graphics. He provided the side art. He did provide the art on the top and in the front too, but I feel bad not using it. But oh my gosh, when you have real artwork that's there, it's a part of that arcade's history. It seems like a shame to sand it off. The sides I couldn't really save, but those things, I just feel like, you know what? They were there originally and they're gonna stay there until, you know, they're just, unless they get so destroyed that I gotta replace it. But anyways, put your comments below. I hope you watched this whole video. I know this is long, I know it's a lot. It's an investment of your time. So I appreciate you doing that. But put your comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed content like this. Do you wanna see more of stuff like this? Uh, and also consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this content. That's it for now, guys. I will see you on the next one.